Megan boldly suggests Governor Gavin Newsom give her Diane Feinstein's seat. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News Version 2 channel. Well, let me tell you, folks, there's some jaw-dropping news about Meghan Markle that's got me fired up. Apparently, she had the audacity to meet with none other than the governor of my own state, Governor Gavin Newsom, and get this. She actually asked him if she could have Diane Feinstein's Senate seat. Can you believe it? Now hold on just a minute. Senator Feinstein has been elected repeatedly by the people, not handed her position on a silver platter like some royal entitlement. And let's not forget, Gavin Newsom and every other politician in this great country are elected by the people, too. They work hard for their positions, and you can't just waltz in and demand a senator's seat and expect to get what you want. But here's the real kicker, folks. Megan doesn't seem to grasp this crucial aspect of how democracies function. Bless her heart, she doesn't have a clue about how anything works, whether it's in the UK, the United States, or anywhere else for that matter. It's almost comical, I tell you. I can't help but wonder what would happen if she actually entered politics. The dirt they would dig up on her would keep us snarking for years. You see, it's astounding how someone who's a U.S. citizen and supposedly wants to dive into politics knows so little about it. I mean, her only experience with anything remotely related to politics was that embassy internship, and let's not forget that her uncle had a hand in getting that for her. Makes you wonder how many jobs she's landed on her own merit versus relying on others to open doors for her. Oh, and let's not forget how her dad got her a bit part in that TV series, and Trevor probably helped her get onto Suits. Well, brace yourselves, folks, because I've got some serious thoughts on Meghan Markle, and I'm not holding back. Could you even fathom her running an office full of assistants and interns, dealing with razor-sharp lobbyists? I don't think so. She lacks the knowledge and experience, especially for such an organization that demands true commitment. And you know what? I used to believe Harry was the daft one, but now I'm not so sure. Turns out, she's just as idiotic, short-sighted, dumb, and clueless as her husband. Clueless as her- Let me lay it out for you. For the past five years, she's been trying to leapfrog over real professionals in multiple arenas without actually putting in the hard work. First, she attempted to leapfrog over other royal family members to become the next Diana, and boy, did that backfire. Then, she had her sights set on leapfrogging over entertainment professionals to become the queen of Hollywood. And again, that didn't quite pan out. But wait, there's more. Meghan and her husband tried to leapfrog over other writers and become world-renowned best-selling authors, which ultimately led to the debacle with the publishing of Spare. And finally, she even tried to leapfrog over other professional politicians, hoping to be appointed to a public position instead of going through the proper process of being elected. Surprise, surprise. That was yet another failure. Meghan seems to be clueless about the concept of earning anything. It's all about using her title to jump ahead of those who've actually worked hard. So much for her linked, not ranked mantra, huh? She seems to believe that everything she wants should just be handed to her on a silver platter. But let me tell you, folks, you can buy a home in an elite enclave with money, but that doesn't mean the people around you will accept you with open arms. You can't simply demand a seat in politics. You have to earn it. And we all know Californians love to elect celebrities in special elections. Oh, I would absolutely love to see her run for office. She'd have to roll up her sleeves, get to work, and actually be nice to people, something she seems too lazy to do. Let's talk about Meghan Markle and her grand political aspirations. I've got to say, I have some serious doubts about what she could bring to the table. Brace yourselves for some hard-hitting opinions, just the way I like it. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if Meghan managed to create some nightmarish situation wherever she goes. Drama seems to follow her like a shadow and I have no doubt she'd find a way to stir up some counterproductive chaos that detracts from the truly vital matters at hand. Not to mention, she has a knack for ruining people who she perceives as a step above her, including the governor himself. I've seen rumors floating around that even Lady C claims the governor won't take her constant calls anymore. And let's not forget the real motive behind her slobbering over that position. Whispers say she's eyeing that IPP status.
IP. So, what's all the fuss about? Well, there's a rumor going around that if Senator Feinstein decides to retire before her term is up, Governor Newsom has the authority to appoint someone to finish out the term. And you guessed it, folks. Megan is vying for that position. But let's be real here. She won't succeed. Even if she somehow managed to be appointed, she'd never survive the election process once the term was finished. Now let me shed some light on how these things usually go. When a sitting senator resigns or passes away in office, it's typical for the state's governor to make an appointment to fill the seat temporarily until another election is held. And here's the kicker. It's up to the appointee to run a campaign and win the seat if they want to keep it for the long haul. Do you really think Meghan Markle has what it takes to pull that off? I highly doubt it. My suspicion is that Meghan had her sights set on this appointment, especially considering Feinstein's reportedly poor health. But let me tell you folks, if she thinks she can just waltz in and snag a senatorial seat, she's got another thing coming. California politics can be a ruthless game, and she'd be wise not to underestimate the challenges she'd face. According to one well-informed insider, the story has been circulating that Governor Newsom would appoint her replacement for a Senate seat. You see, it's a convenient way for the party to maintain control and ensure their chosen candidate gets the seat. They believe that the appointed person, once they've served for a bit, will have a better shot at winning an election as an incumbent. And let's face it, folks, this is the preferred method for Democrats when it comes to replacing senators. But here's the kicker. From all the juicy gossip I've come across, it seems she's never really been in the running for that coveted Senate seat. The party doesn't appear particularly keen on backing her for the CA-24 House seat either, considering there's already a Democrat holding that position, representing the Santa Barbara San Luis Obispo Ventura area. It seems Megan had these grandiose visions of becoming the next Obama. First, holding a Senate seat for a mere two years and then setting her sights on the presidency. Oh, bless her heart. But let's be honest, folks. Merely manifesting isn't going to cut it when it comes to attaining lofty life goals. The real world of politics is far more complex and competitive than wishful thinking can handle. Perhaps in time, she'll come to realize that she can't just snap her fingers and have things handed to her on a silver platter. It takes hard work, dedication, and genuine support from the party and the people. It's time for Megan to put aside her fanciful dreams of political stardom and face the reality of the rough-and-tumble world of politics. Look, folks, there's a stark difference between Megan and Obama, and let me break it down for you. Obama had a law degree and grassroots political experience under his belt, not to mention that undeniable charisma that captivated audiences. Meghan, on the other hand, lacks all of the above. It's just the truth, and she might not see it clearly due to her alleged narcissistic personality disorder. Everything for her seems to be a popularity contest. But let's be real. The presidency of the United States is about much more than just popularity. It requires skills, experience, and a proven track record of accomplishments. Now, you can't really blame her for thinking popularity alone might be enough, especially when we had Trump, a fellow personality disorder sufferer, winning the presidency. But let's not forget, people at least convinced themselves that Trump was an accomplished businessman, whether we agree with that assessment or not. On the other hand, Megan hasn't accomplished much of anything that would qualify her for such a significant position. In a Democrat primary, she'd probably be as popular as Kamala Harris, and you all saw how that turned out. Seems like she was banking on Feinstein not completing her term, either by resignation or other means. It's true. All governors are expected to appoint someone to fulfill the remaining term or hold a special election, depending on the time left. And it's quite possible that Megan thought being appointed to the position would give her a leg up in a special election. But let me be clear, folks. It takes more than just an appointment to win over the electorate. It appears she might not be fully aware of how things work in this arena. You see, many sensible and successful politicians are cautious about causing a ruckus with the U.S. State Department by being rude to Prince Harry's wife. They don't want to burn bridges, and some might even be curious as to why Meghan is calling them. So they might take one courtesy call, 
But being no fools, they soon realize they're being set up, manipulated, and treated rather poorly. Now, it's a fact that politicians take thousands of personal meetings with constituents, donors, and supporters throughout their careers. Some of these meetings might involve shady donors or individuals with questionable pasts. It's simply part of the political life. However, getting an hour-long meeting with someone like Governor Newsom is undoubtedly due to Megan pulling her royal family card. I'd wager that she went into that meeting all guns blazing, presenting her progressive ideas on paid parental leave, minority rights, and whatnot. And then, of course, she probably went on to boast about her backing from billionaires like Tyler Perry and Oprah, who she claims will pull out all the stops to promote her if she decides to pursue a career in politics. My guess is that she eventually brought up the topic of Feinstein's seat, or perhaps even a congressional seat. Now, let's be real here. Governor Newsom gets these kinds of requests from various people all the time, but the fact that he gave someone like her, who some might consider a lightweight, such a long meeting, was probably because of the respect and adoration people have for the Queen and Prince Charles. They wouldn't want to ignore anyone close to the royal family, so they'll be polite and listen to their pitches. It seems the public has caught on to Harry and Meghan's hustle in L.A., and all the special considerations they once enjoyed as members of the royal family have now evaporated. They're just plain Harry and Meghan, looking for a job in SoCal, where there are millions of other couples in the same boat. Now, here's the thing. Meghan holds a degree in international politics and theater from Northwestern, but you wouldn't know it given her apparent lack of basic knowledge about how American politics work. One would think Northwestern would have required at least one course on American basics, but it seems she might have skipped that essential learning during grade school. And let's be honest, it doesn't help the reputation of Northwestern or the little Catholic school she attended either. She seems to think that getting the personal phone numbers of American politicians and just giving them a call to support her ideas on paid leave for parents is a piece of cake. Oh, how naive. But wait, it gets better. She actually thought she could just pick up the phone, call the governor, and land herself a Senate seat. Talk about an American history, politics, and social studies fail. Perhaps she was too busy writing to dish soap operas to bother learning about how things work in the real world of politics. And let's not forget about her twin flame of love, Harry, who declared the First Amendment to be bonkers. I mean, seriously? You would expect a man in his position to at least have some understanding of the importance of free speech and expression in American society. But I guess he's as dumb as a sack of rocks. One might wonder why he didn't say something like, seems a bit bonkers to me during their evening discussions. So there you have it, folks. It seems Megan doesn't understand the Constitution or American history, and that's not a good look for someone claiming to be interested in American politics. As a black woman, you'd think she'd be more informed about the history of our nation's first black president and how he made his way from Illinois to the White House. But alas, it seems she might be lacking in that department as well. One commenter, maybe California has different requirements. In Illinois, or at least in my part of the state, you were required to pass some tests on the U.S. Constitution, American and Illinois history, and Illinois Constitution before you could pass from eighth grade into high school. This was a long time ago, but so was Megan's childhood education. I'm really appalled by her lack of knowledge of how the U.S. government operates, considering her degree in international politics. Perhaps she studied Imelda Marcos and said, I want to be just like her. She loves shoes, too. Reportedly, special elections are not held for U.S. Senate seats, only for the U.S. House of Representatives. If a U.S. senator dies or cannot fulfill their elected six-year term of office, the governor of that state has the authority and the obligation to appoint a replacement until the next scheduled election for that particular seat. If it is a U.S. House of Representatives seat that is open because of a death or other reason, the governor has the authority and obligation to set a special election for that seat. National elections take place every even-numbered year. Every four years, the president, vice president, one-third of the Senate, and the entire House are up for election. 
On even-numbered years when there isn't a presidential election, one-third of the Senate and the whole House are included in the election. Feinstein's seat is up for election in November 2024, with the actual term expiring in early January 2025. This means, if she resigns, is officially deemed incapacitated or passes away before sometime next summer, when the filing for qualification to stand in the election typically takes place, varies a little in each state, whoever is appointed would still have to qualify and win the election to remain in office past January 2025, as the term they would be appointed to expires then. Also, even if Dianne Feinstein doesn't step down, it's considered very doubtful she will stand for election in November 2024. If Sen Feinstein's camp doesn't seem willing to back down and attempts to prop her up for re-election, my honest opinion is, I don't see that happening because judging by appearances only, she certainly seems to have some significant physiological and cognitive issues. I would expect to see some high-profile Democrat candidates running against her. It's weird that the Congressional House with the longer terms can have replacements appointed, and the HOR with just two-year terms requires a special election to fill the remainder of the term. Just another layer of checks and balances, I guess. Personally, I am for congressional term limits and severely limiting lobbyists. But the very people who can begin the constitutional amendment process for term limits are the very people who benefit from long-standing political influence, power, and perks. In the UK, it would trigger a by-election and people would battle it out to take over until the next general election. Some seats were recently up for a similar situation last week, where prime ministers have resigned or been promoted, etc. It is a fact that even if Meghan becomes an MP, she will quickly give it up for the following reasons. First of all, the Dems would make her renounce her title if they wanted her. There's no way any American political party would want the Duchess of anything representing them. I doubt the people of California would either. Second, if she got the job, she'd be so far out of her depth that she'd be bored to tears. Is she going to sit through countless hours of meetings about agriculture policy, or whatever? Not a chance. Third, being a senator is not a high-paying job. She wouldn't make enough to maintain her mansion and she would literally be the lowest-ranked, least important person in the Senate. No one in Washington would be impressed by her. One commenter, more like how California Democrats work. Cali is a huge Dem state. You work your way into the system. It's like how Hillary Clinton became senator of New York. She was in the system, worked the channels, and boom. Newsom needs favors. If he is going to run for president, He'll need more than a dumb prince and a Z-lister. He needs people who can get the vote out, especially those in other states that he needs to win the nomination in. Anyways, Megan is so dumb, but pretty incredible how she keeps on finding new ways to embarrass herself. I wish I could say no. Impossible. Megan cannot be that deluded. Unfortunately, I think most likely this ask did in fact happen, and she believed she'd get a yes, just because she asked. Meghan Markle, who in terms of U.S. politics is 100% no one. It's indeed in the governor's power to choose a successor to finish her term if Miss Feinstein passes or has to step down before her term ends. But only a lunatic could possibly think such a position would simply be handed to someone with zero experience. The senator has more decades of experience in government than Megan has been alive. What do you think about Megan's approach to Governor Gavin Newsom? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.